Enggak ada suaranya ya, Bu? Oh, oh rana suara nih. Bentar. Jakarta memiliki tiga kampus yang diperuntukkan dalam menunjang kebutuhan kegiatan belajar dan mengajar. Pengajaran di Universitas Mercu Buana Yogyakarta dilaksanakan dan dikelola oleh fakultas dan program studi pada jenjang sarjana dan pasca sarjana, meliputi Fakultas Psikologi, Fakultas Agroindustri, Fakultas Ekonomi, Fakultas Teknologi Informasi, Fakultas Ilmu Komunikasi dan Multimedia, Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan, dan Pasca Sarjana. Guna menunjang sasaran universitas dengan beragam pilihan fakultas dan program studi yang terakreditasi di Universitas Mercubuana Yogyakarta juga didukung oleh sarana dan prasarana untuk pengembangan diri dalam mencapai tujuan akademis dan minat bakat mahasiswa. Universitas Mercu Buana Yogyakarta berusaha terus mengembangkan diri menjadi universitas yang memiliki keunggulan dalam bidang pendidikan dan penalaran serta penelitian dan pengabdian masyarakat baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional sebagai cita-cita untuk mencerdaskan bangsa sehingga membantu masyarakat mewujudkan kesejahteraannya. Hello, good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hai, Waalaikumsalam. Okay, so finally we come to the last series of this workshop, uh, which is held by the collaboration between Universitas Mercu Buana Yogyakarta Indonesia and also University Pendidikan Sultan Idris Malaysia. And let me introduce myself. I am Elisa Haradi, would like to be your uh, moderator of today's workshop. Before we go to the main agenda of today's workshop, the last series of UMBA and UPSI workshop, I would like to uh, say greetings to all of you here, the participants, the team of the joint collaboration and also the dean of faculty. 
Okay, let us start our agenda today. The Honorable Dean of Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Universitas Merjubuana, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, Mr. Noriadi, SPD, SE, MPD, or in this case, it will be represented by the Vice Dean, Mr. Agustinus Hari Setiawan, SPD, MA, the Principal of Sekolah Menengah Sains Banting, Selangor, Malaysia, Mr. Rijaludin bin Cemat, Principal of Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Hir Johari, Perak, Malaysia, Mr. Aman Shah bin Idris. All of the participants from Sekolah Menengah Science Banting and also Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Hir Johari. And also several participants that today they cannot join, but I would like to greet all of you here from USIM. Good morning. Today, we are going to have another happy occasion, uh, which is the last series. Uh, this is still happy then, hopefully, uh, to learn about CLLA, Cultural Language Learning Approach, that later on in this agenda, we would like to hear from you because today's agenda will be FGD, Focus Group Discussion. So we would like to hear from the voices of the participants who have already attended for the previous workshops, the series one and series two. Before we go to the main agenda, um, we would like to deliver some of our feelings here. Uh, we just heard that there are some uh, yeah, bad news from Malaysia and also Indonesia. So we would like to, to send our deep condolences to the 53 patriots of the Indonesian nation, the crew of the KRI Nanggala 4.402 that we heard the submarine sang at that time. So we do hope that they rest in peace. And also we would like to send our prayers our prayers also go to the citizens of Malaysia, especially to Sekolah Menengah Science Banting, due to the COVID-19 outbreak that we heard several days ago. May God always protect us in this time of uncertainty and distress. So we do hope that all of us are given uh, always yeah, blessing and also uh, the best protection from our God. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us go to our business today. And we would like, I would like to uh, read the agenda and the rundown of today's workshop. So first of all, uh, our agenda will be opened with the opening session. And the next one, there will be speeches, the closing speech that later on will be delivered by the dean and also principals of those two schools. And the next session, there will be focus group discussion or FGD that later on there will be sharing. There will be also uh, teaching models performed by the teachers here. Uh, and we have already got the lists. There will be Ibu Norfarizan and also Bapak Ahmad Daniel that later on they would like to perform their understanding about the implementation of the CLLA. But later on there will be also, if um, there is another participant from um, Khir Johari, we are also welcome for that. And last but not least, we will have a closing session. So ladies and gentlemen, um, let us begin our workshop today by saying basmalah. So we do hope that our workshop today will run very well. So ladies and gentlemen, let's say basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All right, the second agenda, there will be speeches. Um, this is actually a closing speech, but we make it right now since later on probably the deans and also uh, the principals will have another agenda to do. So the first closing speech 
will be delivered by the Vice Dean of Faculty of Teacher Training and Education from Universitas Mercubuana, Yogyakarta. So to Mr. Agustinus Hari Setiawan as PDMA, the screen is yours now, please. To Mr. Harry, is he now ready for that? Um, Mr. Harry? Oh, okay. All right. Um, Mr. Harry just confirmed that there was a um, trouble in the internet connection. So uh, we would like to give, uh, what is it, a speech to the, to the principal of the Sekolah Menengah Hirjohari. So to the Mr. Ahmad Shah bin Idris, the screen is yours now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first and foremost, I wish to extend my deepest gratitude to all the esteemed speakers from Universitas Mercubuana, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, Dean of Faculty, Teacher, Training and Education, Universitas Mercubuana, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, Principal, Joint Organizing Committee UMBY, UPSI, and participants of the Cultural Language Learning Approach webinar. I am honored and humbled me to be here today at this event. It is indeed a meaningful occasion. Thank you for the opportunity given to the English teachers of SMK Khidjahari to participate in this three-day webinar. It must have been a great effort for the speakers and join committee to bring those unique ancient cultures of Indonesia to be shared with the participants. It is undeniable that teacher can become an ambassador to open up the eyes of the new generation to the almost forgotten cultures as what had been shared in the webinar. It is indeed an insightful sharing of how cultures can be part of the teaching and learning activities. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, culture is learned, transmitted, passed down from one generation to the next through human actions, often in the form of face-to-face -face interaction. On the other hand, language is a subpart of culture which plays an important role. So, language teachers should have interest in the study of culture. Basically, most of the language teachers may have integrated cultural awareness in the teaching and learning process, but it could be simply in the touch and go manner. Thus, I fully hope that this three-day webinar will spark new ideas amongst the participants on the effective ways of how cultural heritage can be part and parcel of the teaching and learning process. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me once again thank for inviting me and my fellow teachers to join in this webinar. I believe that everyone had shared and obtained invaluable insights and knowledge from the CLLA workshop with the belief that we must do more. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Rahman, for the nice speech. Thank you. The next. Closing speech will be delivered by the principal of Sekolah Menengah Sains Banting. So to Mr. Rijaludin Bicemat or the representative of principal of Sekolah Menengah Sains Banting Selangor, the screen is yours now. I'm sorry, Miss, uh, Miss Moderator. Okay. Our Mr. Principal cannot attend today's uh, workshop because he has a meeting oh. this morning, an urgent meeting this morning. I'm so sorry, yeah? 
Oh ya, yeah. oh, yeah. alright. Thank you, yeah. Ibu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we would like to come to the next speech uh, that will be delivered by the Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Universitas Mercubuana, Yogyakarta, Indonesia. So to Mr. Agustinus Harisatiawan, SPDMA, the Vice Dean, as the representative, the school is yours now. Okay, thank you, Ms. Elisa. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, so sorry, I uh, have a technical problem with my device, so I answer with my mobile phone. So sorry for uh, the situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once again, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Our uh, national and international league. Yeah, dear guests, and then all the uh, speakers, yeah, the honorable speakers, uh, all of you, yeah. First of all, thank you for uh, God, the Almighty, yeah, for uh, blessing us today. And then uh, here we can attend uh, for this last, yeah, uh, workshop series. Yeah, we have workshop series uh, that already run well, yeah by our uh, beloved speaker for entitling a sharing session yeah, uh, in this last, uh, uh, what is that, a workshop with the CLLA, yeah, Cultural Language Learning Approach yeah, from uh, the collaboration between UMBA and UPTI. We have uh, Dr. Dr. Randa Hermayawati, SPD, MPD. Thank you very much. Yeah. Then we have uh, the rest speaker, uh, Bu Elisa Hartati, uh, SPD MPD, that currently I'm the moderator. Very nice to meet you, Bu Elisa. And then uh, Bu Lulu Ilmaknun, SPD MPD, and also all the uh, collaborators from UPSI. We have Dr. Fadila Binti Zaidi and Dr. Dina Miza Binti Suhaini, and Dr. Zabidah Abdul Atif. And then the last one is Dr. Mo. Nazri bin Abdul Raji, yeah, and then uh, for our institution collaborator, yeah, head of uh, UPSI, uh, we have uh, two international school, yeah, thank you, uh, which is uh, the here we have the principal of uh, Sekolah Menengah Ten Stunting, yeah, from Selangor, Malaysia, and also uh, the principal of Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan, ya, yeah. Ir Johari, Perak, Malaysia. Thank you very much. Yeah. First of all, after uh, uh, say our gratitude to God, we have to say, yeah, once again, it's already said by the previous, yeah, speeches and also moderator that we send our deep condolence, yeah, to uh, the Indonesia and Navy SEALs uh, victim for KRI. Nanggala 4.2, yeah, and also uh, here we have another uh, things to say, which is uh, the uh, citizen, yeah, from uh, the Sekolah Sen Banting, Malaysia. Uh, we also say uh, our deep condolence from the COVID outbreak, yeah, in Selangor. Uh, I hope uh, we all have uh, the faith and also the health and also uh, we get uh, our what's that? Uh, that protection from uh, our our cat. Then uh, after having two series, yeah, from all beautiful and great speakers, yeah, uh, we have. To come to the last one, which is sharing session. Yeah, I hope that uh, this sharing session can be also beneficial. Yeah, for us as a best practice and also sharing. Yeah, from uh, the participant that comes into speakers. Now, then, I hope that all across the globe. Yeah, especially for teacher and also student, uh, are looking for ways to increase better teaching and the merciful one through the CLLA approach that 
can be a solution to yeah for our young generation and also uh, in relation with the education phenomena in this uh, crisis of the pandemic that offer an important reflection from our education field and uh, uh, was that uh, cultural field yeah uh, then I hope uh, this activity and this cooperation yeah can be uh, continued later on then uh, sincerely too that this a workshop can be a recommendation that we will have a lead a better material world of education yeah uh, through this uh, several phenomena and several problem so the last one thank you very much ladies and gentlemen uh, finally allow me on behalf of the dean yeah of the teacher training and education from universitas merdu buana to close my address then I wish you all an education and fruitfulness workshop sharing. That's all. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much uh, to Mr. Agustinus Hari Setiawan, SBDMA, for the nice and part of closing speech. Ladies and gentlemen, now we come to the agenda that we are waiting for here, which is the focus group discussion. So here we would like to hear the voices of the teachers, the voices of the lecturers, the participants who have already attended for the series one and the series two, UMBY and UPSI workshop of CLLA. Now, without any longer ado, I would like to welcome the first um, model, teaching model uh, from Sekolah Menengah Science Banting. And she is here right now, Ms. Norfarizan, or she is very familiar by being called as T. Izan. Yeah? <laughs> so, T. Izan, uh, how are you now? <laughs> Uh, I'm fine, thank you. But still nervous waiting for the result of my uh, COVID test. Oh, I see. And somehow right now we are all wearing a bangle indicating that we, we, we are under quarantine actually. Oh, you are not quarantined. Mm -mm. All oh, of I us see. teachers. All right, so hopefully everything is fine. And yeah, hopefully. We do, hope, we do hope that your kids as well, uh, the students there in SM Science Banting, they are well. all fine. Okay, so you are still having some spirit, right, <laughs> Ti Izan? Yes, yes okay. inshallah. All right, so Ti Izan, um, we would like to give you a chance to perform what you have already prepared. Mm -hmm. Yes, because everything uh, happened in a sudden, yeah. Uh, we do not know that, yes, the COVID-19 also you know, attacked your your school and also, yes, the stakeholders there. Okay, so Jason, right now you are given a chance to perform your teaching um, model by using CLLA. Now you may have your screen or probably if there is something that we can help to operate uh, the Zoom, we are also glad to help you. Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to the, Dean, to the Dean of Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Universitas Mechubwana, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, Principal of Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Kira Johari, Mr. Aman Shah, lecturers from University uh, Universitas Mechubwana, Yogyakarta, lecturers from University Pendidikan Sultan Idris, Miss Moderator, and fellow teachers. Okay, right now I am going to show you my lesson plan, my proposed lesson plan with which I will implement this lesson plan with my Form 1 students in my school. Okay. All right, can you all see the lesson plan now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the lesson plan. And all right, the class will be from one, one Al-Biruni, one Al-Farabi, and one Al-Hasib. Basically, because uh, in our school, 
we segregate the students according to set system, meaning that we have set A, set B, and set C all together. So this group of students will be of set B, which is, which is of intermediate level. And the topic will be weddings from different cultures. I allocate the time about 60 minutes for this lesson to be carried out. And the number of students will be 26 students altogether. The language aspect will be vocabulary and language skills. And the first activity, I will say that the students will <coughs> implement. <coughs> so sorry, excuse me. <coughs> the students will implement reading and writing skills. And later on with the group activity, they are going to implement listening and speaking. But after all, I can say that there will be the integration of all the four skills actually, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Okay, the objectives will be at the end of the lesson, the students will be able to, number one, understand and appreciate the uniqueness of weddings from different cultures by practicing the do's and don'ts etiquette when attending weddings. Number two, comprehend and interpret the notes, uh, which is about weddings from different cultures on PowerPoint slides. And finally, for the group activity, the students are going to create a wedding card completely and creatively. Here we can see that the previous knowledge will be students will be exposed to the do's and don'ts of wedding etiquette before we can actually proceed to this activity in the lesson plan. And we are hoping that the students will learn how to practice cultural awareness by applying the do's and don'ts when attending weddings. So I would say that my teaching aids will be PowerPoint slides plus the projector and also the other materials that we will be given to the students are Mahjong papers, F4 colored papers, marker pens and dictionary. And the reference video will be the twinkle.com. All right, these are the practices uh, where I will show you after this with uh, the PowerPoint slides. Okay, this is for the self practice, which is for the individual practice. And later on will be the group activity. Okay, let me share you the screen of my PowerPoint. Okay, can you all see the PowerPoint? Yes, of course. Okay, all right. This is the PowerPoint about weddings from different cultures. Okay, you may have questions about the types of weddings from different cultures. For example, what do they do? What do they wear? What is the ceremony called? And where can they get married? So we will see if you can answer most of your questions using this information PowerPoint. Okay, basically I will include all the religious symbols here and I will open for discussion for the students. So meaning that uh, students will select which religious symbol that they want to start first. Okay, for example, that they say, okay, teacher, I want Christian Christianity. So I will click on the religious symbol of Christianity here. Okay, then we will be directed to the Christian weddings then. Okay, click on the pictures to find out more. Okay, we have three pictures. Yeah, four pictures here. Okay, now I click on this one. Christians believe that marriage is one of God's gifts. Weddings take place in a church. And then the ring here symbolizes the bride and groom exchange rings, which show their eternal love. There is no beginning or end to a ring. The bride usually wears a white wedding dress and the groom usually wears a suit. The bride also wears a veil to show her modesty. So meaning that it is very uh, student friendly this PowerPoint is very student friendly and it will be two way interaction. It's not just from me. So meaning that uh, I will open for, for the students to choose which picture that they want to start first. For example, they want the ring. So I will click, I will click the ring and then we will have the uh, details about the ring here. Okay, so now we move on to the other symbols. Okay. The bride and groom say vows and declarations in front of God and the guest. They promise to love and cherish each other. How about this one? We clicked. Okay, the couple are pronounced then as husband and wife.
to show that they are now united as one in the in the eyes of God. Okay, the register legally has to be signed to certify the marriage. And after that, I will ask the students, have you ever been to a Christian wedding? Then we will see their responses as well. Okay, now we move on to Islamic weddings. Okay. What if we click for the moon symbol here? All right, Muslims are people who follow the Islam religion. The weddings are different depending on which country the people come from. Muslim brides may wear a white wedding dress or brightly colored shalwar kameez outfit in red and gold. The couple don't have to be in the same room when they marry. And some marriages are arranged with the help of the parents. Normally, before I proceed to the next slide, I will open for the Q&A first so that the students will have an opportunity to ask to the teacher what are lingering into their mind. Okay. Now I click on this one. The wedding is called a nikah. Nikah is the legal contract signed by the bride and groom. The husband sometimes pays an agreed money gift to the bride called a mahar. Many Muslims have an Islamic ceremony at a mosque and a confirmation at a registry office. Walima is the second part of the wedding where performances, speeches and the feasting happened. And if we realize there are actually so many vocabs, vocabulary terms that are probably unfamiliar to the students, okay, so that they will learn certain specific terms according to the differentiated wedding cultures here. Okay, so click here to see a photo of a Muslim wedding couple. So I click here. So the students will see this one, this photo of a Muslim couple. Okay, now we move on to Hindu weddings. Okay, we can see the three symbols here. I click on this one. The most important part of the wedding tradition is subtapat, when the bride and groom take seven steps around the holy fire, the divine witness to their marriage as they say their vows in Sanskrit. So we have a, an image of fire here. Okay, Pani Grahana is a ritual taken place near fire where the groom takes the bride's hands to represent their union. The celebrations are extremely colorful and can last for a few days. They include dancing, blessings, and prayers, as we can see from the image and a couple image here. Okay. All right. Now I click on this one. A Hindu wedding is called Vivaha, in which two families are joined together. Kanyadan is the very emotional part of the ceremony where the father gives his daughter away to the groom. Here we can see Hena. The bride and lots of the bride's family have their hands and feet painted with Hena designs. Actually, in a uh, Muslim wedding also, we do apply Hena, but we call as uh, Inai, if I'm not mistaken. Eh? Okay, hasta milab is when the brides and grooms right hands are joined together with a white cloth. Okay, I am going to show you a video of Hindu weddings explanation, but I will try to share first. Huh? Wait. Most of us get married, but many of us don't know half the reasons behind the traditions. Through this video, you will learn some of the Hindu wedding traditions and the meanings behind it. There are tons and tons of things behind a Hindu wedding, but we will only touch base on a few in this video. And no, these are not my real wedding pictures. I got time for that. Let's start with the kumbham. For many Hindu occasions, you will see this set up in the front of the house. It is a form of welcoming guests into the home. The coconut symbolizes a head and the leaves, also known as mavile, symbolizes hair. This setup is called nirei kuram and nirei means full. 
thus symbolizing a full welcome into their home. Weddings are actually supposed to be done at the bride's home, but due to a lack of space and forgotten traditions, they are now done in banquet halls and such. The bride is the first come out in a yellow sari provided by her parents and is gifted the red kudo sari by the groom. This is the first gift he gives her symbolizing that he will take care of all of her needs. The bride is also supposed to reciprocate and provide the groom with a vaiti and shirt. The colors yellow and red are chosen for the wedding saris as these are seen as auspicious. The kura sari is later used as the first blanket they place their children on and the sari she wears after she passes as a married woman. The sari and thali are first sent around to receive blessings from the guests. If anyone picks up the thali, it means they are opposing to the wedding. The bride walks in covered by the veil, meant to keep the bride a surprise and protect her from evil spirits. Before the wedding, something called a ponnurukal happens when they make the gold for the thali, which we will get to in a minute. But once it is made, the bride and groom are not allowed to see each other. This veil is also to add anticipation to their groom and when he finally gets to see her, he will see her as his wife once the thali gets tied to her neck. A thali is supposed to be made out of a yellow thread with a piece of turmeric tied at the bottom. Over time, the thread turned into a gold chain. The pendant of the thali represents the god the family worships. This also goes into the politics of caste and to identify what caste a girl is married into. The thali is worn to symbolize that she is taken. Three knots are to be tied with the thali, representing the groom's lifelong commitment to his bride. Now you may be wondering, how come there's no symbolization that a man is married? The meddi, also known as toe ring, was initially worn by men. So when a woman walks past him with her head down, she will see his meddi and know he is taken. Over time, the traditions have changed so that now the girl wears the meddi instead. On the wedding day, the groom places the bride's feet on the amikal, which is made out of granite, one of the strongest rocks you can find. This symbolizes that the bride is to be as strong and capable of enduring all situations and take care of her new family. After tying the thali, the groom takes the bride's hand with their fingers intertwined and takes seven steps around the fire. This symbolizes seven promises. Share responsibilities, grow together in strength, share our worldly goods, fill our hearts with peace and happiness, raise strong and virtuous children, remain faithful to each other, cherish each other and our families through sorrow and happiness. Another tradition in a Hindu wedding is looking at Arundhati. The tale is about a woman who was so devoted and loyal to her husband that she went to great lengths to prove it. She was worshipped by all for her loyalty and was sent up as a star. At Hindu weddings, the groom shows his bride Arundhati and reminds her to stay as loyal as Arundhati once was. They play many games after the event as a kind of icebreaker between the groom and bride since the culture practices arranged marriage. Of course, a lot of that is not true in today's day and age, so the games serve as a stress reliever after a busy wedding. My favorite is the ring game. The priest drops a ring into a huge vessel and the bride and groom put their hands into it and competes to find the ring first. They say the purpose of the game is to see who will be more giving and compromising in their lives together. Of course, there are so many more traditions behind a wedding. But I hope you enjoyed the little snippet I was able to gather for you. If this was helpful, please share the video. I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and keep it real. Okay. So that is basically about Hindu weddings. All right. Probably we, we, uh, there are certain terms that are new to us, like Amika, and then the seven steps so about, wait, huh? Egg toast really good. Delicious. That's cool. Okay, sorry for that. So basically, there are certain terms that are new and unfamiliar to us, like the term of Amika, and then we have the seven steps, which symbolizes the seven promises and also about the ring games. But interesting to know about all these things, right? So now I will continue with my slides. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we move on to the Buddhist weddings. 
Okay, we have the image here, all right. In Buddhism, marriage is not viewed as a religious duty. Buddhists have the freedom to make their own decisions about their marriage. The bride and groom will light candles and incense sticks, then deliver their vows from the Sigilovda Sutta. There is usually a shrine of Lord Buddha with candles and flowers. Okay. This image symbolizes that the weddings are different depending on which country the people come from. Brides and grooms wear beautiful sarong like bakus. Brides wear a sleeved blouse called hanju, a special coat, scarf, and gold jewelry. Grooms wear a waistcoat. Now, actually, I can ask the students to probably they can sit like a Buddha meditating. Okay, we move on to Sikh weddings. The Sikh wedding ceremony is called the Anand Karaj. The couple can meet on their own or the marriage can be arranged by their parents. Brides in India wear a red wedding dress. In other countries, they may wear white with a channi. The term is channi, which, uh, mean, which means scarf covering their head. Okay. Milni is the beginning of the ceremony where the two families meet. Sikh weddings and worship take place in a Gudwara. This is the wedding place name. And the Sikh are taught that husband and wife love should be modeled on the love between the human soul and the supreme soul. There is usually singing, dancing, and a banquet after the ceremony. And one thing, if I'm not mistaken, this is what we call, they have the Sangeet night here, where the performance of the singing, dancing, okay? So we will click here to see a photo of the Sikh holy book, Guru Grant Sahib Sikhism scripture. Okay, can you all see? This is the Sikh holy book. Now we go to Jewish weddings. Okay. The bride and groom can marry anywhere. Some choose a synagogue. They must stand under a wedding canopy called a pupa during the ceremony. This symbolizes their future home together. So who is this person? Okay, this is rabbi. A rabbi must be at the wedding and the food must be kosher. The couple exchange rings, which symbolizes the unbroken circle and union of the married couple. Okay. Right. The bride and groom do not eat on the day, which is called fasting. The groom breaks some glass at the end of the ceremony and people usually shout mazel tov. The Jewish marriage contract, ketubah, is signed and sometimes the man still pays a dowry. Traditional Jewish music is offered played. There is also usually some lively circle dancing called hora. Okay, so meaning that here, find it out. I will give an assignment to the students to find out what, what is the kosher food means. Okay, so that's the end and basically this is going to be the self-practice exercises for the students in which they have to complete individually. Here, I won't give exactly the name of the religious symbols, but I will just give the religion symbols only for them to analyze and probably they can note down somewhere else at the end of the, at the site of the symbol. And they have to include the belief according to the religious symbols here. The next column, they have to uh, put in the information about their attire during the wedding itself. What will be the for female and what will be for the female attire. And next here will be the wedding place accordingly. All right. And finally, probably for certain wedding cultures, they have uh, certain symbolic items. So they can actually insert the symbolic items under the column here, the last column here. And this is to be done individually because we want to test a student's understanding towards the a PowerPoint notes that I have given to them just now. 
Okay, now we move on. Once they have completed the individual practice, I will move on to the group activity with which the students will form a group of four or five in a group. Next, they have to choose one type of wedding. And number three, they need to use mahjong papers, marker pens, and A4 colored papers to write and design a wedding card. They have to design collaboratively here. And finally, they have to present their wedding card in front of the class. But before they can actually uh, start forming a group, I will show them examples of wedding cards. Like, okay, this one, this is um, a wedding card that I received from one of my colleagues, my best friend. And uh, he, she's from a royal family. So we can see here, but it is written in Bahasa Melayu. Probably the students can have a look at this wedding card and they can translate by using a dictionary later on. And they need to know that we will have the tentative program here. And then the, what you call the list of contacts that they can actually reach to if they have problems. Okay, here are the details uh, on the invitation. And the most important things here is that will be the date, the time, the venue, and also the dress code. Okay, this is for the Malay wedding. All right, and this is for the Sikh wedding. So they can see example here. We have the Madam Amar Kaur, wife of late Mr. Poran Singh Sidhu, and then the address, also the a sentence saying that we'll be delighted to have your company. And then at a Sangit night, this is the Sangit night where we have the dancing, the singing just now that we discussed from the PowerPoint slide. And also the, an important detail here will be, this is a non-alcoholic event. So meaning that all races of people can join and celebrate this wedding uh, ceremony. Okay. And also they have a program as well. We can see on the 23rd September, I'm so sorry because this is a last I think, 11 years ago, but I still keep the wedding card with me so that I can use with my students later on. And then we also have wedding reception card here. So basically it's up to the students how they are going to uh, design their wedding cards and what information that they are going to include in the wedding cards after all. Okay, that's all from me. All right. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Jizan here. How, yes. how do you usually be called there with Jizan as well yes. or ma'am? Uh, oh, normally st students will call me as Miss Izan. Miss Izan. Yes. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Izan, right. for uh, the presentation. Uh, we know that in oh, sorry malaysia is quite similar to indonesia right we have many cultural um multi multicultural oh, yes. country mm -hmm. in which uh, we have several religions there mm -hmm. okay and uh, now um we would like to hear uh what is it the comments probably or the feedback from the uh from the team from UMBY and also from UBSI here. I also see Mr. Nazri here. Maybe if you, sir, would like to give some comments on uh, Ms. Izan's sharing, uh, we will come for that. And also for the other participants here, you also may give feedback or questions to Ms. Izan here. Okay, so please, ladies and gentlemen, now um, we we have the time for having sharing from Ms. Izan's presentation here. Maybe anyone from the participants would like to ask questions or comments, feedback to Ms. Izan's performance here. Anyone? The participants first, I think. Mm -hmm. So we are sharing here, okay? So any ideas, any feedback, any suggestions are welcome. Anyone? 
Okay. All right. Maybe while waiting for them to um, to internalize or probably to uh, formulating uh, suggestions or ideas to what has presented by Ms. Izan. Uh, maybe we would like to hear from uh, the team from Universitas Merdubuana Yogyakarta or from UBSI, University of Pendidikan Sultan Idris. But first of all, I would like to give it to Ibu Maya here. I think Ibu Maya has lots of thoughts mm -hmm. here to be delivered or to be shared to us. Please, Ibu Maya. Okay, thank you so much, Bu Elisa, uh, for the time given to me to give some, uh, what is it, comments, yeah, on Miss Norva Rizan's uh, presentation. Okay, first of all, I would uh, like to appreciate uh, Miss Izan's presentation. That is really great, yeah, uh, great presentation Thank you, with you. great materials, right? And actually, uh, I appreciate that uh, Malaysia, uh, as, as what is told by Ibu Elisa, Malaysia has, uh, what is it, more, uh, much of similarities with Indonesia, right? So we have also, uh, we have also uh, multiculturalism, uh, ceremonies especially uh, especially for uh, five religions here in our country yeah but uh, my question is <laughs> it is only joke <laughs> yeah when will uh, you invite us for your <laughs> own wedding <laughs> for your own wedding invitation <laughs> <Ms. Izan. laughs> when you, you just uh, presenting uh, uh, you just uh, presented uh, various types of probably of, I, I will get the aura first ibu <laughs> we'll get the aura and uh, finish yeah, probably, yeah. probably inshallah <laughs> yeah, inshallah we will go uh, we will uh, be there yeah if you invite us okay yeah yeah, yeah i can ibu inshallah <laughs> <laughs> no just just kidding okay. okay just kidding right um well actually uh it is not what is it that is amazing yeah amazing materials yeah but it is uh based on or according to clla uh, pure or original concept mm -hmm. it is less specified yeah less specified mm -hmm. because because yeah i know that uh all of all of the wedding parties you just presented mm -hmm. are used to used to carry uh, carried out in malaysia is it right is it right yes yes Ibu. oh yes okay yeah uh, that is what is called multiculturalism so if you uh you teach uh, that kinds of materials yeah you can uh what is it uh, you can match yeah you can match uh both of kinds of approach multiculturalism and also cultural language learning approach yeah if you go to uh what is it to specify one of the wedding and then you highlight one of the wedding that's mm -hmm. uh it is CLLA, yeah, but, but okay. if you highlight all of the types of the weddings, mm -hmm. that is multiculturalism. Okay. Yes, yeah, because right. uh, you know uh, what is the uh, what is it, the intention mm -hmm. of uh, highlighting all of the materials you just presented? That is just to make the students, uh, which consists of uh, various cultures they can uh what is it they can be steered to respect mm -hmm. to respect others culture mm -hmm. because uh, we are united uh, somewhat like united countries right yeah mm -hmm. uh, uh, consists of many uh, various mm -hmm. of ethnics right and mm -hmm. also religions yeah that is a, a very very uh, good 
materials for uh, for us as teachers to let's say, to convey to deliver for our students. That's good, but it is too what is it too much? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what what gave you more? Uh, give more specify specify uh, mm -hmm. of the wedding one by one. Yeah, okay. one by one. Yeah, uh, to make it more focused, mm -hmm. right? Okay, okay. but uh, 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 what is it? All of the what is it? Materials, lesson plan are okay, right? But if you are going to use original CLLA, please uh, use more specified. Uh, what is it? Material. Okay, okay. because if you uh, deliver all of those materials. It is worried. It is worried mm -hmm. for the students to get confused, right? To get confused. Uh -huh. Just once more again. Just uh, what is it? Just specify one of them, and please highlight mm -hmm. what kind of, what kind of skills, what kind of linguistic aspects, what kind of, uh, what is it? Knowledge dimensions uh, you are going to highlight or you are going to make your students acquired, well acquired. All right. It depends on the, uh, what is it? It depends on the, on the approach. Yeah, on the approach you are using. If you use multiculturalism, it's okay. okay. Yeah, you can present. It depends also the available time, a lot of time, right? Mm -hmm. If you have three uh, times, okay. yeah, three. Uh, I mean three, three hours learning time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's okay. You may use uh, multiculturalism. So it is a little different. Yeah, if uh, mm -hmm. cultural language learning approach. Uh, should be yeah, should be more specified, more okay. yeah, especially for uh, the original uh, cultural heritage, mm -hmm. really, really from Malaysia. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean to uh, what is it to ignore or to uh, what is it to ignore or uh, other other cultures exist in our country no not at all not at all it depends on the once more again it depends on uh what is it the types of approach we are using okay if you use multiculturalism yeah because you have lots of time to present it it's okay mm -hmm. right okay. but if you have more limited times of a limited available time mm -hmm. yeah you may specify pick one of or okay. as if especially the the really Malaysian culture, okay. really original one. That is the difference between multiculturalism and a CLLA. Okay. Got it? Right. Okay. Yeah, got it. That is okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my next question is, mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, what is it? You make lesson plan mm -hmm. uh, to develop the students. What is it? Reading, writing, right? Reading, reading, writing with linguistic aspects, vocabulary. Is it that? Uh, vocabulary yes. only. Uh -uh, vocabulary. Uh, vocab vocabulary and only, right? Vocabulary okay. only. Uh -uh. Is it possible? My next question. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible for you to make use of uh, one or all of your materials mm -hmm. to highlight or to develop the students other linguistic capacity, linguistic aspect capacity besides vocabulary. What are they? Grammar. Yes. Yes. Good. Grammar aspect. Grammar, yes. Uh, what what kind of form you can make use of your uh, materials? Um, uh, when, yes. When, right. when, okay. When when they write when they when they write the wedding card. Of mm -hmm. course, they will use a present tense and a future mm -hmm. tense because you will be invited. So will be there will be a future tense will be invited. So basically, the grammar aspect will be present tense, and we can also 
include uh, model verbs there and future tense as well. How do you consider? How do you consider uh, mm -hmm. or what do you base? What do you base? Yeah, to what is it? Uh, to define what mm -hmm. kind of grammatical terms or structural terms I'm going to teach to my students. Uh, is it tenses? What considerations? What Sorry? Consider is it tenses? The answers. The tenses all? Oh, the tenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, uh, oh, the tenses. Uh, what kinds of tenses? Why the tenses? Okay, uh, tenses will be uh, before this for sure that they, 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 they have mastered simple present tense, uh, past tense, mm -hmm. all the tenses. But as for writing the wedding card activity, for sure they are going to apply simple present tense. And then uh, one aspect will be, uh, one aspect of vocabulary will be model, model verbs with the use of uh, should be invited or will be invited there. Okay. And also, okay. again, when it comes to tense again, a uh, future tense, like okay. will be just now. Uh, mm -mm. What I mean is, mm -hmm. after you find the raw materials, and uh, what is it? It is time for you to teach grammar. Okay. And, okay. What kind of consideration you make use of the raw materials you have to develop into the student's book sheet? You know what I mean? Um, consideration meaning that their level of performance, is it? Before. No, no, I mean the, uh -huh. the linguistic aspects, linguistic aspects. Linguistic okay, aspect. what about if you uh, re, uh, what is it, okay. represent? Uh, the, the lesson uh, plan. Yes, to okay. deliver uh -huh. once more the the Hinduism first, the, the Hinduism wedding. Hinduism wedding, wait uh. Yes. All right. But actually not only that one. Okay, wait uh, Ibu. Yeah, uh, the Hinduism. Uh, I, I, I mean the... Hinduism. Okay, is yes. this the one? Okay. Hinduism. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Um. Okay. You develop. You are developing vocabulary in this case, right? Mm -hmm. My question yes. is: Is it possible for you to also uh, make use of the material, the raw mm -hmm. materials, mm -hmm. to develop the students? Linguistic aspects, other linguistic aspects, I mean. Oh, you said oh. grammar, right? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it possible for you to uh, make use Develop. of this raw mm -hmm. material to, to teach grammar? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. 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 Okay. yes. Okay. Because yes, they, they can have a matching exercises when we okay. put, in, put in the terms and then the definition of it. So actually okay. they, yeah, they can uh, make use. It's just that teachers can actually... Uh, what you call that make variety of the exercises by by giving them exercises on matching ex uh, matching practice for example mm. so okay. they finish uh -uh. Mm -hmm. okay uh, what types of grammar uh, you can uh, what is it you can develop for your students uh, exercise exercises i mean worksheet yeah what types of grammar mm. uh -huh. based on this based on uh, the raw material Based on this raw material, I think it will be like just um, the definition is just definition. No, no, uh, I mean the grammar one. That? The grammar one, yes. Definition, uh, uh, definition vocabulary, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yes. Wait, wait, the bright side. No, line. you told grammar. Yeah, it, it is possible. It is possible for you to make use of this. Uh, uh, what is it? Raw material to mm -hmm. highlight the grammar teaching. Okay. Oh, what about the others? Please also thinking of my questions. And the uh, other participants. Yeah, Ibu Maya, there uh, is another uh, response here from Ibu or Bapak Nur Azura Osman here. Uh -huh. okay. But it is related, I mean, like uh, he or she uh, gives input that uh, we can ask the students to fill in the blanks with simple present tense in the wedding uh -huh. card. 
So does it still make sense of our context or not? Simple reason. No, no, uh, I just focus on the uh, wedding, uh, Hinduism wedding material. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's press five first, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of linguistic aspect beside vocabulary to uh, develop our students' uh, acquisition? I mean, linguistic aspect acquisition. Beside vocabulary, yes, uh, it is mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it is yes, possible yes. to uh -huh. highlight the grammar, right? Uh -uh. Yes. Which ones of the grammar forms? If you ask me, the grammar form will be the present tense, right? Present. Uh, present tense. Present tense. Present, okay. Yes, present tense. Okay. Other, which one is the present tense form? Okay, basically the general statement here about the sub part when the bride mm -hmm. and groom take seven steps around the holy fire. So meaning that this is present, uh, yeah, in present tense. Okay, let me help you. Uh -huh. Let me help you, yeah, to find uh, to find uh, the question uh, the the answer. Okay. Uh, what what if you highlight uh, you underline the what is it the predicate is a ritual taken is okay. a ritual taken place okay I'm sorry wait wait uh -uh. okay ritual taken place this one. With the group take the bread hands to okay. replace it. And then the celebration are extremely uh, colorful. Oh, sorry. Wait. Uh, no, 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 not this, yeah, not this. It is uh, right, right, present, present tense, yeah. If, if are extremely colorful, no, not this. It, it is for present tense, right? Yeah. Present tense. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, I mean, not this one. I mean, not this one. Uh, not not the Hindu weddings. Yeah, uh, you are right. This is for for teaching present tense, right? Uh, uh -uh, what is it for teaching? Uh, I have found to teach passive form. Which one? Yeah, oh, because passive, active form and passive form. Passive form, yes. Mm. Which one? Which one? Okay, uh, yes. we will see. There is a is not viewed yeah in buddhism marriage is not viewed probably but this one the bride and groom we see the bride and groom wait huh? i show you yeah uh, uh sorry this is considered uh, this dominant dominantly with uh passive form this one the bride and groom we light candles and incense sticks so we can see that candles and incense sticks uh mm -hmm can be lit up by the bride and groom. We, from the active mm -hmm. uh, form, we can change to passive form as well. This one. Mm -hmm. But it's not dominant. I, I mean, oh, uh, you, you, you just present, uh, what is it? The raw materials which are uh, uh, dominant, dominant use with, what is it? Uh, passive forms. Which one? I forget. Okay. Passive forms. See. Yes. Uh, so I mean, uh, the raw materials can mm -hmm. can also be taught. Uh, can also uh, be used to teach, teach a passive form. form. Yes, okay. but the, uh, uh, but which one? Which one? Yeah, uh, the most important thing mm -hmm. uh, if you have raw materials, okay, uh, then please uh, underline mm -hmm. which dominant with dominant language aspects mm -hmm. or language functions yeah oh, okay. can so be we... highlighted for the students to practice that is what okay. i mean uh -uh. yeah uh, so sorry uh, mm -hmm. what is it i forget which one uh, but uh, what's it the raw materials uh, full of the use of passive forms which one <laughs> okay, wait. Uh... yeah but it's okay it's okay, no problem. 
I just want one of them. Yeah, one of them uh, are dominantly with the use of passive forms. Yeah, so uh, the most important thing is, uh, mm -hmm. Bapak and Ibu, if you find the raw materials and you are going to uh, develop or highlight uh, the linguistic aspects, you may consider uh, what or which uh, dominant linguistic aspects or which dominant uh, language functions are in the raw materials then please highlight yeah those kinds of or those types of linguistic aspects that is the way okay yeah. but don't be too much giving the students okay so yeah. many ibu we just highlight eh? highlight so that we can show to students the linguistic mm -hmm. aspects there is it which one uh like ibu said that if let's say our focus will be like we want to we want them to change from uh, active sentence to passive sentence for example mm -hmm. so we can actually mm -hmm. highlight highlight yes. and give them it the can be. That. yes ah, it can be okay. but for for, for mm -hmm. teaching vocabulary it's okay that's great yeah that's good ah. I, I do agree with you okay 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 mm -hmm. yeah Oh, yeah. uh, you may uh, use all of your materials to mm -hmm. to teach, but you know that the approach is uh, considered multiculturalism. Oh, okay. It belongs to yeah, be belongs to multiculturalism, not CLLA. Oh. Yeah. So if it CLLA, is, uh, so meaning it, that if let's say I want to focus on CLLA, meaning uh -huh. that I have to be more focused and only uh, choose one type of reading and then uh, uh -huh. really give solid information or solid input to the students about that particular wedding am i right yes ah, yes okay. okay especially the malaysian one the malaysian okay. one yeah Probably, uh -huh. yeah uh, but it depends yeah mm -hmm. it depends on the what is it on the uh on the students if okay. your classmates consist of multi multi mm -hmm. or uh, various ethnics mm -hmm. you may use multiculturalism oh okay. but it is okay if you also introduce mm -hmm. CLLA yeah okay. but CLLA here means if you uh what is it if you highlight the traditional the local uh, cultural heritage okay got it okay. oh yes like for example like Malay wedding the local yeah, yeah. Will, will be like we have kompang yeah, uh, all those things. So, ah, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. It depends on the uh, what is it uh, on the on the students. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, the characteristics of your class. If oh. the class consists of various ethnics of students, mm -hmm. comes from many uh, many societies, many nations. Yeah. That's okay. very good. Yeah. That's uh, uh, what is it? Uh, that is considered match. If you okay. make use of multiculturalism, okay, yeah, multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, multiculturalism intention is to what is it? Uh, uh, to steer the students' uh, respectation to what other, other cultures, culture. right? Uh -huh. So, uh, what is it? The the motto is unity in diversity. There is uh, okay. unity in diversity. Yes. There is a multiculturalism. That is a a, a bit different with CLLA, with CLLA. right? CLLA mm -hmm. uh, more focuses on mm -hmm. uh, the local culture. Local culture. So, yeah, the intention is we introduce mm -hmm. our cultures to others to be known and respected. Great. Okay. Yes. Yes. Ha -ha. Okay. But anyway, that, that is great. Yeah, it is a great presentation. Bu Elisa, uh, yes. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, 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 <laughs> do you have any uh, okay. questions? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, basically what has been presented by Miss Izan is very great. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. just uh, I think what Bu Maya has already uh, said previously that 
yes, we need also to uh, differ yeah, between the term of the multiculturalism and CLLA itself. As I said previously that yes, Indonesia and Malaysia are multicultural countries. So uh, when we would like to, yeah, it goes back to our intention. It goes back mm-hmm. to our purpose anyway. What mm-hmm. is God actually God. our purpose? If we would like to preserve our own local culture, yeah, we can use the CLLA. I mean, the approach that we can use to deliver the materials to the students by focusing on one local culture existing mm-hmm. in our uh, region or in our country itself. But mm-hmm. if you want to... Uh, introduce other cultures as like um, yes Indonesia and Malaysia are the same we have Hinduism we have Buddhist and then we have uh, what Chinese as well Uh, we can use uh, another one that is multiculturalism Mm -hmm. but yes it also yes it goes back it goes back to our purpose whether we want to introduce um, our local culture, which is really, really, um, what is it, um, traditional mm-hmm. or local heritage that we need to preserve and we need to uh, conserve it as well with our students. Yes, CLLA is uh, is the one to be used in our teaching and learning here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yes that's it. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I think Jason previously also mentioned about um, the local wedding culture in Malaysia. What is it called, Miss? Is it Kamyong or? Oh, no. Is it? Is it a Malay wedding where we have a, uh, an instrument being played on like kompang. Kompang. Oh. Yes. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. That is our local culture as well. Okay. Associated, associ- associated with the Malay wedding. Mm, I see. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the music. Yes. The yes. traditional uh-uh. music. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe uh, that is the thing that uh, we need to, uh, what is it, um, introduce more, yeah? Uh, uh, yeah. The, the, kam, kam yong, yeah? Uh, kompang. Kompang, yeah, yes. yes. Kompang, kompang, kompang traditional music yes. uh, accompanying the Malaysian wedding ceremony. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm, that's it. So, is there any kind of um, moral value or stories behind that, that music anyway? Actually, the kompang will be played mm-hmm. when the bride and groom uh, walk together mm-hmm. and then uh, into the plumbing mm-hmm. and basically to show the, that, that the society all celebrate the wedding as well and hope for the uh, good future for both bride and groom as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Yeah, maybe uh, if there is something that we can dig up more from uh, Kompang itself, mm-hmm. um, it will be better uh, to introduce to the students. Yes. If you want to use CLLA, mm-hmm. ah, that is better. Huh. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Okay. Uh-uh. So, Ibu, I can consider that, Ibu. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, but I think it is also okay. Huh? I mean, like uh, previously, I also saw Ibu Jaya Laksmi, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, my friend. Ah, uh-uh. I think she is also Indian or something. Ah uh, yes, um, Madam Jaya and also my my colleague Madam Kalavati. Oh, uh, I they, see. Yeah, they are Indians. Mm-hmm. So if they are Indians, probably they also can can introduce uh, their, their culture, culture as well. uh-huh, to the students. Um, so it's gonna be multiculturalism, yeah, Bumaya. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because introducing. Uh, what is it? Other cultures oh. to the students. Mm. Yeah, how 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 the other the other people will respect our culture if mm. we <laughs> ourselves do not respect our own culture. That is the intention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So it, it is important for us to uh, introduce our our own culture yeah, to others to be respected, of course. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or to what is it? Uh, uh, the more important is to prevent, yeah, to prevent our traditional cultures uh, from extinction. Yes. Yeah, to yes. avoid getting mm-hmm. uh, getting extinct. Mm-mm. Yeah, getting lost. 
fade away oh, ya yeah, yeah. lama kelamaan gitu uh-uh. Uh, if, uh, we do not uh, we do not we try hard, mm-hmm. yeah, to preserve yes. uh, mm-hmm. our uh, traditional cultures mm-hmm. and it is very dangerous yeah why because uh, what is it our cultural heritage uh, actually contain uh, very very rich in uh, in message yeah, hidden message yeah, to teach And that is a, a very, very, what is it, match with our field teaching language, right? Not only English, yeah. Uh, all of the languages, I think, can be, uh, uh, can use, yeah, uh, or is considered uh, appropriate to use uh, CLLA. Got it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. CLLA is more, more, uh, is, newer ya, yeah? New, more novice yeah? rather than multiculturalism. You know that multiculturalism is, uh, what's it, is, uh, has been uh, developing yeah, since 2002, but CLLA is uh, considered still new. Yeah? All right. It's, that is the difference. With that uh, We have to know the difference uh, between multiculturalism and cultural language learning approach. Got it? Okay, yes, Ibu. Back to Bu uh, Moderator, Ibu Elisa. Okay, okay thank you, Ibu. Uh, maybe Bu Lulu, uh, who also presented about wedding at that time, maybe you have some yes. thoughts oh, related okay. to it that maybe you can also um, collaborate with um, the wedding, uh, the Malaysian wedding that was proposed by Dr. Zaida yeah, from UPSI. Yeah. Okay, thank you Bu Alisa. Yes, what Bu Maya said. Actually, Bu Maya and Bu Alisa has been cover all the feedbacks for Sik Izan or Miss Izan. So, yes, I do agree that Miss Izan already has, uh, you know, the great materials for the students and also uh, Sik Izan uh, have formulated the objectives as well as the goals of uh, your teaching and learning process on your classroom. However, Ms. Izan should be more specific to strengthen the concept of the LLA itself, right? So perhaps you might focus on the wedding of Mali itself uh, uh, as one of your own local cultures, yeah? Uh, for example, one of my collaborative team, uh, uh, Dr. Zahida, sorry, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Zahida. Zahida, yeah, provide a text about Malay wedding, Malay wedding. Uh, she gave me the text about uh, the stage of Malay wedding, which is Mary Sik, Meminang, Bertunang, or Akadika, yeah. Bersanding, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. So perhaps you may focus on the Malay wedding and mm-hmm. then explain your uh, students To recognize, yeah, uh, their own local, especially Malay wedding, which is you can uh, implement as well the kompang, kompang, sorry, kompang, kompang yes. as a, a traditional music for the Malay wedding. So uh, they will know uh, the whole process of the Malay wedding as your own cultures to represent the LLA itself. Mm. Yeah, so it can help you uh, not not help you as well, but also help the, your own country to, to preserve, to conserve uh, your own cultural heritage. And also uh, uh, the, the young generation of the, the Malay, uh, Mal- Malaysia, mm-hmm. I mean, can learn the moral value behind the cultures as well. What is Kompang? What, what, what is the moral value behind Marisik, Meminang, mm-hmm. uh, and then bertunang, bersanding, what is that? So they, they will to understand, not only as, as Bu Maya and Bu Elisa said about multiculturalism, but also you focus on your own uh, local culture, which is represent the concept of the LLA itself. Mm-hmm. And also about the language focus as well, yeah, perhaps, Uh, Miss Izan, sorry, Miss mm-hmm. Izan, have to be focused on the language focus, language aspect, yeah, mm-hmm. 
or we have language use or linguistic as well. So the student not only learn the vocabulary in in the vocabulary itself, but also learn vocabulary in the whole context mm -hmm. or represent the the real context of the the for example the Malay wedding, yeah. So you may give this uh, the text type the whole context of the uh, Malay wedding, for example, perhaps using uh, informational text or perhaps explanation text or perhaps procedure text and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So it can help the student not only learn about vocabularies, but also uh, the genre itself and also mm -hmm. the specific context and also the grammar itself. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Well, we saw from yeah. me. Okay. Yeah. So the vocabulary here is not just learn isolated in isolated way, yeah. But yes, yes, uh, it can be integrated into integrated. the context itself. Yes. Hmm. As like uh here, uh, Bapak Zeno also uh, what is it? Um, probably uh has some thought that we also can ask the students to change the active form into the passive form. Yes. So. For the text oh, itself, we can just mm -hmm. uh, take the language features there, the linguistic features mm -hmm. then. Then we can ask the students to modify uh, from the active into passive or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think uh, it's wrapped yeah, already. Miss uh, mm, Izan also has tried to present it in her understanding. That's good. Yes. I do appreciate right. it. Thank uh -huh. you, so, Izan. <laughs> thank you very much. And let us give applause to Miss Izan Yay. for being brave <laughs> to, uh, to present it to us. So, ladies and gentlemen, you also can have the reactions here if you don't want to have your clubs, but you can have this kind of thing <laughs> to appreciate uh, Miss Izan's performance. All right. Thank you mm -hmm. once again, Miss Izan. All right, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Uh, we mm -hmm. go to the next um, modeling teacher here. So we have another teacher, another participant from Sekolah Menengah Sains Banting as well. Uh, we would like to welcome here Bapak Ahmad Daniel. Hello, sir. Okay, hello. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Hello. How are you? Fine. How are you guys? We are great. Fine. Great. Um, <laughs> are you are you now quarantined or yes i'm quarantined i'm wearing my pink bangle mm, okay. here okay <laughs> all right hopefully everything is fine yeah hopefully okay, okay. So well. all right so what should we call you mr ahmad or mr daniel or uh you can just call me mr daniel mr daniel okay all right, so Mr. Daniel, um, you may present your understanding, your your sharing, especially uh, what you have already got so far with CLLA. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, so okay. Um, I'm so sorry because uh, since that we are quarantined, so our kids mm -hmm. cannot go to school, so mm -hmm. we, we are going to be interrupted once in a while. See this one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. Okay, so I'm very good morning, everyone. Good so morning. for my uh, class, I already did the class, but apparently uh, mine is actually quite similar to Miss Farizan's because um, uh, I, I did the same thing, like multicultural thingy. So it was not actually focused on only one aspect of the culture. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually uh, a few cultures that we have in Malaysia, a few... A few uh, races. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might not fit the CLLA definition exactly. Okay, so uh, I do not have a proper presentation for it. So I'm just going to uh, tell it verbally with you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I focus on listening, speaking, and reading as the skills. And what I focus was actually um, when we first entered the class, the uh, opening of the class, the introduction, what I, uh, what I did was uh, we talk about Malaysian cultures in general. Okay, so what the students know about the Malaysian cultures, what they know about uh, our food, our historical buildings, our uh, weddings, for example. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and then I 
you know, get their feedback after getting their feedback, then I will focus, I move the focus to the point that I would like to, uh, I would like to teach them for the lesson. So that will be traditional dances. Okay, so um, uh, I will ask them, I, I did ask them, the traditional dances that they know, so they come up with a lot of them. Okay, because in my class, we have um, uh, people from Sabah or Sarawak, I'm not, if, if I'm mistaken, she's from Sabah, and she told me about uh, the traditional Sabah dance that, uh, is it Kadazan Dusun or Iban? I'm not sure, I can't remember. Okay, and also, uh, I remember some of my students, they told me about Malay dances. We have the Zapin, for example. Have you guys heard of Zapin before? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, we have ever heard of Zapin dance. Uh, so, um, apparently, some of my students, we, we got confused because some of our cultures are quite similar to Indonesian cultures. Right, so, uh, um, so that is why I use a worksheet that I found uh, regarding Malaysian context only and I found out that Zapin is uh, one of the, uh, the the cultures that we have in Malaysia, the culture, cultural dances that we have in Malaysia. So I'll focus more on Zapin if I were to do CLLA. So if in, in my future classes, because this one I already did it, so it was multi multicultural dance. Okay, and then I showed them uh, the different dancers, the different, different traditional dancers videos that I found. So, um, do you have time for me to show the videos? Sure. Okay, so let me share my screen. So I will ask the students to guess the kind of dance that they are showing in front. So none of us actually know what's the name of this dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. hmm? uh, sir, we are sorry that um, the music um, I mean, the video itself cannot be heard at the music. Maybe uh, oh, really? you, have, you yes. haven't taken uh -huh. the, the share audio. Oh, where's the share audio button? Um, you need to close this. Uh, okay, stop sharing it. first. Uh -huh. You stop sharing and then okay. come to the share screen. Share screen. And oh, yeah, there's a share you... sound button there. Ah, yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. So I'll do it again.
this is one of the Zapin dance. Uh, so this is the Chinese dance. Um, it, I can't remember the name in English, but it's uh, a dance where they use fans. We call it Tarian Kipas if it's in Malaysia. Indian dance but it's Bharat Nadiyam dance Okay, so this is, um, uh, I think it's a version of DK Barat, but quite different than uh, uh, the, the DK Barat from Kelantan. Okay, so uh, that would be some of the Malaysian tradition dances. Um, uh, we do have like, like, like the Indian and the Chinese dance where it's actually, it came from uh, China and India itself. Uh, but still we incorporated it into our culture here in Malaysia as well. Okay, so uh, after showing the video, uh, I asked the name of the different dances that they can identify in the video. Then only, uh, you know, we have like a listening and speaking class where we talk about the dances, all the dances that we saw just now and comment on it. Okay, and then only uh, I will pass out to the students a, a worksheet because um, for this one, we are going to focus on the worksheet now. Um, the worksheet here. Okay. It is a worksheet about uh, Malaysian cultural shows. So, so 
here we have a tentative for this one particular event where they have a few dances in 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 the event uh, focusing on five different malaysian traditional dances okay the zapin the lion dance the barat yam dance the ngajak dance and the sumazau dance so uh, malay chinese indian kadazan dusun and iban dances that we have in malaysia Okay, so for the first task that they have to do is first we have this audio um, in the form of this dialogue. So these two people they talk about the tentative. Uh, so basically, this is where the listening comes, uh, and then they will have to answer these questions based on the worksheet and based on the dialogue that they heard. So. Uh, we have also some vocabularies over here. So they, uh, this would be the reading part where they read. Okay, they read the tentative and then they answer the questions based on the tentative. Okay, so that would be the first part of the worksheet. The second part is, okay, we have some visual clues of the dancers that we have, the Zapin dance, Sumaizaw, Lion, Barat, Barat Tanak Yam dance, and the Ngajak dance. So, uh, and a simple description of the dancers, okay? So these descriptions, they are not very detailed. So the detailing part uh, is actually going to be done by the students when they present. Okay, so that would be the, that would be the last task. Okay, so this will be the last, the, the last part of the class will be the students presenting about the different dances that they are uh, given to. Okay, so uh, for this part of the worksheet, they have to answer this passage. Okay, again, this would be reading uh, by copying the, the, the answers that they found from the passage uh, from the brochure here and then put it inside the passage so in the passage we have uh, again a very simple uh, explanation or description about these five dances so Malaysia is rich in traditions and cultures it has a lot of tradition dances that are really fun to watch Zapin dance is a popular Malay dance. It is usually performed during, so they got the answer from here, during Malay traditional events. Okay. Then the Barat Yam dance is a popular Indian dance. So everything can be found in the description there. Okay, once we are done with the worksheet, then we will have uh, 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 the discussion of the answers uh, with the students. Okay, and then after we are done with the discussion, then only we'll have the students to move over to uh, the computers that I have in my class so that they can form groups. Okay, let me show you uh, my class first. Okay, so this is the, the environment in my classroom. So this is the part where they watch the video. Okay. Uh, I actually have a projector on the other side, but I did not turn it on because I would like to the students to focus only on one single side. And also the projector is not that clear uh, as compared to this TV over there. Okay, so um, as you can see in the middle of my class, this is a future classroom, we call it, uh, we have 12 computers for the students to use. So what the students can do is they can uh, do group works, uh, presentations and research using the computers um, and then present it in the class. So what I did was I, I have the students to form uh, three to four members in one group. Uh, and then, and then uh, I give them the dance that uh, each group is going to get one dance, so one particular dance, and then they are going to research, do a research for that particular dance uh, and transfer it into a presentation slides. 
then only they are going to present it in front of the class. So I focus on only these five different dancers. So uh, I had five different groups, but unfortunately, the presentation is going to be done in the, in the next class, and supposedly it was Friday. Uh, but Friday, our school uh, had to be closed because of COVID-19 outbreak. So uh, most probably, we're going, we're going to continue with the presentation uh, after the school reopens. Um, so later on, um, uh, after Raya, I think. So yeah, so this is them doing the worksheet. And oh, I do not have the photos of them. Uh, I do not have the photos of them doing the research apparently, so sorry for that. Uh, then, yeah, that comes to the end of the class after we are done with the present, uh, with the research first, because the presentation is on, on the next class. So I guess that's it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, uh, Sir Daniel. We also have our colleague here. Uh, his name is the same, Daniel. Oh, All okay. right. Uh, uh, it is happy for us anyway because uh, we think that you have already implemented this to your students right before the outbreak of the COVID. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. So then, may I know um, your students' responses uh, after you give the materials about the traditional dances in Malaysia? Okay, the students they were actually quite uh, amused because um, they don't they know the dances but they don't know the names of it and especially the Sabah and the Sarawak ones mm -hmm. uh, because they 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 say that they saw them in on TV but they are not sure about that particular dance at, mm -hmm. to be exact. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but but all your students um ethnics are Mai, aren't they? They are mostly Malays. Yes, oh, they, okay. they are actually uh from two students, uh 14 year olds. 14 years old. Okay. All right, yeah, because Malaya uh, is uh, is Malaysia is quite close to our um you know. <clears throat> province, especially Sumatra itself. So yeah, probably the the ethnics are the same. Uh, we have some Malays there, but probably they are not that many as in Malaysia itself. Okay, uh, maybe others uh, have some thoughts related to Mr. Daniel's presentation here. So Mr. Daniel here was trying to insert uh, the materials related to traditional dances in his classes. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mr. Hari would like to have some thoughts or feedback related to it. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ms. Melissa. Yeah, and also congratulations to Mr. Daniel. Yes, and that already applied. Yeah, what we call uh, CLLA. But later on, yeah, we have some um, uh, resharing about uh, other experiences too. Uh, can I know what grade is it? The grade, the level of the student. The level of the student should be yeah. about B B two. CFR is it? Yeah. Uh, it should be B two around B two or C one like that. Oh. Uh, or one maybe in a if in our level maybe in a eight or seven grader yeah to Elisa yeah maybe yeah yeah um but uh, this is sekolah menengah ya sekolah menengah sekolah menengah oh yeah maybe uh probably for the great um Mr Daniel <clears throat> they, they are fourteen years old they are so fourteen they are fourteen, 14 years. Yeah. oh yeah SMP yeah. yeah. SMP, SMP, SMP yes. Junior yeah. High School. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as we see, that's very great. It's already applied. Yeah. We really like to have this this sharing too. Yeah, from other participants later on. 
uh, Mr. Daniel has already shared his best practices, but like uh, Dr. Hermayawati and also Bu Elisa and also Bu Lulu, ya, yeah, uh, it's for the opening. Uh, similar with the multicultural approach, ya, yeah, but of course the first intention, or in my opinion, ya, yeah, to introduce the student that Malaysia, like what Bu Elisa said in the first. Indonesia and Malaysia, yeah, especially in Malaysia, have multi-culture. Uh, uh, started from the samples, yeah, from the opening, we have several dentists that emphasized by Mr. Daniel into five yeah, specific uh, different dentists. That's right. Uh, uh, with the opening of the multicultural approach, maybe because of the COVID outbreak yeah uh, we can say that uh, the 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 next step or the next meeting that we want to know that we want to what uh, know more because it's very interesting to know the students presentation for each yeah for each then that's why uh, mr daniel later on can elaborate more i think about what the specific characteristic Yeah, explore more uh, from the student performances, of course, with the uh, like what we can call the dance, uh, Zapin dance, yeah, and we have uh, many dance from the video, yeah, from the multicultural uh, dances into the the local culture uh, dances. Uh, What kind of what activity uh, instead of just presenting the 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 dance from five different groups, Mr. Daniel? What will they do? Because we have known your your uh, previous activity from from uh, from the multicultural approach teaching, yeah, from showing the videos then. You give them a worksheet. Yeah, we have several activities. Uh, we are wondering, yeah, about your next plan. What will you do, Mr. Daniel? Okay, so uh, I already asked them for the presentation. They have to do some research on the particular dancers. So they will have to find more detail of the dancers. For example, the, the Zapping dance. So what would be the reason people do the zapping dance okay what was the reasoning behind that part, uh, the, that that dance the history behind zapping dance where it came from uh, so that will be in the presentation in the next class oh yeah great uh what do you think about the text type the, the text type of the what that next meeting if it is about what's the history what's the reason Text type can you teach to your students? Text type. Text type like uh, previously uh, in my previous presentation, I have procedural text yeah, to teach my students about how to make yeah, how to make a candle dawat yeah, for example one. And if you have what a student presentation in from the research. And let them know the reason, let them know the history and the moral value, of course, behind of this dance. What do you want to give uh, uh, them for the language device? And then from, from the, we can call it the text type. We have a uh, procedural text type, descriptive, plurative. Maybe can we know about it, Mr. Daniel? So I think it should be descriptive. Because it's describing those dances. Yeah. Okay, we can we can go in that way, yeah. Describing the dances, yeah, because of uh, uh, observation, yeah. The students have already observed, watched in a group, and they have a discussion. Yeah, they can describe the dance, and then uh, they can go deeper on the reason, yeah. Uh, you said previously the reason, the way, uh in details yeah you can have kind of uh, 
explanatory later on. Yeah, the explanation if you want to go dig up more about this. So sorry for the the inconvenience. Yeah. So uh, instead of just yeah, we can say uh, listening and speaking. Yeah. So we'll also show another integrated yeah uh, skill that can be taught to the students. Thank you. Yeah, it is so rich about. Uh, The, the 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 skills and also the the link aspect yeah and also the the language dimension but once more uh, we can have a, a different language dimension later on from the first uh, activity Mr. Daniel yeah with the next activity after the COVID because uh, the, previously it is the introduction in uh, briefly yeah but the next you can go deeper with the certain Uh, links aspect and the language you mentioned. Um, okay. Maybe so far I have those those kind of feedback related with the, uh, complete. Yeah, I, I think for for the first trying, you have a lot of activity, Mr. Daniel. Yeah, uh, we can see from the worksheet. Yeah, but uh, because I do not see the uh, the the current uh, uh, need for the student. Yeah, maybe we can see after that from your next. Teaching later on, for well, because we know the level of the student, so we can uh, make the material uh, in the next level for, for 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 the next meeting, yeah. Because the first one is still for introduction. Maybe that's all from me to Elisa, and then maybe the other uh, participant or the previous speaker want to have another sharing or feedback. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Daniel, once more. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Harry. Uh, maybe the others would like to give some thoughts or ideas here uh, from other participants, probably. From Bapa Zainal, maybe. I think Bapa Zainal is very active here. Uh, we would like to hear some voices from you here, Mr. Oh? Okay. Bapa Zainal is no longer here. Maybe others from. Bu or Bapak Anwar Sidek? Mm -hmm. Okay, or probably from Ibu Halena. I think you are from the same institution here. <laughs> or maybe uh, the participants from uh, Sekolah Menengah Hir Johari then. Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Hir Johari, maybe you would like to have some thoughts related to uh, the models here from uh, Miss Izan or Mr. Daniel here. Mm -hmm. Okay, or Ibu Maya, Bu Lulu, you would like to add something? Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there is a thought here from Ibu Nor. Azura Osman here. Yes, it is a well-prepared lesson plan by both of the teachers from Sekolah Menengah Science Banting. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Yeah, Bululu, maybe you would like to add something? Okay, yes, beyond the challenge of, yeah, you know, grammar, punctuation, spelling, you know, student needs to understand the convention and structure of, uh, what is that, the many different spec types that I said before, and also Pahari said before, or genre, right? There are many different text types that will have uh, my encounter in the course uh, or in the teaching and learning activities. So perhaps understanding the various aspects of uh, different genre will help students to, you know, navigate their way through writing, speaking, listening or perhaps reading that uh, that 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 can serve a, a broad range of purposes so yeah i do agree what who bahari said that you have to focus on text type as well so it helps students in their own text composition and then understanding the various text structures will provide students with uh, what is that mm an evacuate uh, their own work, yeah? their own writing perhaps, their own reading, speaking, or perhaps listening. 
Mm-hmm. I think that's all, Elisa. <laughs> Focus <laughs> on the next step as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, mm-hmm. the Zangre. The Zangre. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yes, maybe last but not least here, we have Bumaya. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Pak Daniel. Okay, uh, actually you have found very great raw materials, I think, yeah, but uh, it is still like what uh, have been presented by uh, Miss Izan, yeah, that uh, it is too general, right? It is uh, uh, more match, yeah, uh, to teach using multiculturalism. Uh, method yeah yeah multiculturalism but it's okay mm, if you are going to make use of uh, such kinds of uh, types of dances yeah it's okay no problems yeah it depends on the purpose on the purpose mm-hmm. and also who are your students yeah uh, what is the characteristics of your classroom yeah if your classroom consists of various ethnics yeah you can make use of the whole types of dances yeah from indian from malays yeah from uh what is more uh Available in Malay, Indian, or oh, Chinese, yeah, Chinese, oh, yeah, Chinese, Chinese, Malay, yeah, Indian, okay, right, and a little maybe from Western uh, people. Yeah, it's okay if you you uh, make use of the raw material uh, consists of various ethnics as far as you, uh, what is it? You your students consists of various ethnics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my next question is, uh, Pak Daniel, Mr. Daniel, uh, how is the way to make use of such kinds of uh, video, video of dances to teach listening, listening and speaking and yeah, this is the pair the pair of uh, integrated skills right okay yeah how to make use of the raw materials uh, of uh, types of dances to teach listening and speaking what do you think uh, by make you making use of the dances not media but uh, as the materials parts of the materials probably we can have like a video that shows two people having conversation regarding the dance mm-hmm. that they know okay because the video just now i showed is actually just to attract the students to uh, attract the attention of the students but not to teach anything in the video it's just that to attract them so probably we're going to have another video uh, with people conversing about uh dances what about the sounds, the sounds, uh, the voice of, uh, of uh, uh, what is it? The voice of to fulfill, yeah, to fulfill the dance, uh, the dance video. Uh, you mean like a, a narrative where they tell you about the dances that are happening in front of them? Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. You can uh, make use of what is it? A kind of subtitling, okay. It in the dances performance. Yes, yes, sure. Yes, okay. Running text, okay. Running text, and uh, the running text should be voiced. Yeah, be voiced, right? Yeah, that a is uh, 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 that that is uh, I would say the media can be used all at once as the materials. Yeah, for listening. Okay, so okay. Uh, while watching the dancing uh, the students are asked to listening to the voice 
and also reading the the available running text. Okay, so you can make use of integrated directly, yeah, integrated listening, reading, uh, listening and reading, right? Okay. Uh, what would if we continue to uh, make use of such kinds of materials to teach speaking then? Speaking uh, so, probably through reading, you mean? Yes, from listening and reading, uh, integratedly, yeah, and then uh, uh, develop it to be speaking, to be speaking material. How is the way? I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> Your funny son. Uh, lovely funny son. Yes, my son is requiring my attention right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. He, he wants to join. Uh, once joins the past activity, yeah. All right, once more again. How is the way to make use of the dancing video, which is completely with, uh, what is it, running text, yeah? And then to make use of the uh, materials, the raw materials to teach speaking, to develop the student speaking competence. Okay, so probably first we have to have like uh, a, a recording of another audio uh, that mm -hmm. describes the dancers. Okay, and then another different worksheet uh, that should be uh, focusing on the dancers and it should be in passages, a long passages. So that is easier for the students you know, to focus more on uh, reading, listening and reading. Uh -huh. Uh, so meaning the, the 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 materials that I use just now uh should be not enough for them I think mm -hmm. it should be yeah, something yeah. longer. No no I I just ask okay. you uh if uh if you extend <laughs> if it is possible for you to extend uh what is it to teach uh speaking besides reading and uh, listening and reading how is the way. So speaking Good. class, uh, we should be in the presentation, I think, because presentation, be... yes. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, ask the, the students, part. invite the students to practice, right? Mm -hmm. To practice. Yeah. What is practiced? What should be practiced by the students? What should be practiced? Uh, yes. Uh, you know that speaking must be practiced, right? If yes, there is uh -huh. no practice, means that that is not a speaking skill, right? Uh huh. So what? Yeah. What, so uh, uh, what? What should be done by the students uh, to practice? To practice speaking, you mean? Yes, of course. Uh, to practice speaking. Based the... on the materials you give. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Suppose you make use of uh, dances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the uh, running text, that is listening, reading, right? Yes, yes. What about speaking? How is the way to develop such kinds of materials to be speaking material? To be speaking materials, probably feedbacks from the students verbally. Feedback. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Feedback. What kind of feedback? What kind of feedback? Um what they found out from uh, based on the videos and based on their readings and then they tell mm -hmm. the teacher about their feedback they, they tell the class about their feedbacks about what makes the dancers interesting oh and probably they have to uh, repeat the description that was in the video itself so you ask your students to describe to describe the uh, describe uh, the content again. of the running text. Uh, describe again after the video ends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't you think that is a kind of part of understanding of comprehension? That not should... speaking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is the difference between reading or listening comprehension with speaking? Uh, 
You mean the presentation, is it? In the form of presentation? Yes, yes, uh -huh. uh, even presentation, but it is still about the content of the given uh, video. There is comprehension, right? Even though the students must uh, present, must uh, uh, speak, right? Uh, but that is not a kind of a speaking activity. So can you suggest a speaking activity? Yeah, even though they speak, they speak, but it keeps about the materials. That is reading or listening comprehension, not speaking. Mm -hmm. Right? See that? Okay. Uh, what about uh, in speaking skill? Uh, uh, I actually I mean, have no the idea. Concept of, the concept of teaching speaking. How must be? Um, for their level, I think their speaking would just be about repeat, re repeating the vocabularies that they found, uh, that we learned from the Are you video. Sure? Are you sure? I'm not sure. <laughs> Ibu, can you can yeah. you give this a suggestion yeah. if you have? Yeah, uh, you know that speaking and also writing uh, can be uh, what is it? conceptually practice by using the student's own words, the student's own ideas. As okay. in their feedback? Yeah, as far as uh, if the students uh, are asked to are asked to answer the questions related to the materials we uh we gave to them that is not speaking or they uh, uh that that is not writing but that, that is comprehension yeah because it's still related to the text or discourse we gave them yeah so always the way to teach speaking is to make use of the linguistic aspects uh for the students to develop by using their own ideas and then practice it uh, in in uh, groups, yeah, in pairs or uh, individually, in monologue way, right? So speaking uh, is not only uh, not only speak based on the materials we uh, we just gave to them, but they make use of their own ideas to express their feelings. Yeah, the difference with writing is in written way, what about speaking in spoken way. So they have to make use of their own ideas and not based on, based on, fully based on, I mean, fully based on the materials we gave them. We ask and then they answer that is not speaking, but the comprehension. We check the students' understanding towards the given discourse. So as in feedbacks then, because we ask for uh, their feedback. own opinion in their own ways. Yeah, uh, even though that is a feedback, it is comprehension, not speaking activity. Yeah, even though you are as you in, in, invite your students to to speak, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean uh, that they're speaking uh, activity, right? So, um, how is the way to develop the materials? Yeah, you have just presented to uh, your students to be speaking materials. I mean, speaking exercise. Yeah. I have no clue what you want. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me give you a, a, what is it, illustration or description yeah, on how is the way to develop yeah, uh, uh, the materials of uh, listening, reading, uh, for speaking material or speaking exercise or speaking worksheet, right? Uh, firstly, we ask the students to highlight or to underline certain phrases, certain language functions, certain linguistic aspects available in the given text, and then ask the students to develop their own language their own words then practice it yeah 
then practice it. It depends if you are if you ask your students to practice it in oral way, that is speaking skill, because the students use their own ideas yeah, to practice. What about like in speaking? Feedback. Yes. Feedback is they give their own opinions about that. Yeah, you their mean? opinion. Uh -huh. In their own way. Oh, you so. mean feedback? Uh, feedback of the. Their, their own way, their own way, yes, their, their own, their own ah, opinion. Ah, that's what I was saying. Ah, I see, I see. So give the students back. Uh, but uh, uh, have you ever implemented such kinds of uh, activity to your students? What about yeah. uh, the, uh, the allotted time? Is it is it possible? Uh -huh. uh, it's possible because last time I also uh, in this class also I did that. I, I asked them about what their own opinion about these dances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In their own words. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, so it's in there. I see. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, it is a variant, yeah, variant of uh, the way to do, to develop the student speaking. Okay, it's with that. That's not not asking about the content, yeah. No, not no, asking no, no. About, no, no. But not asking about your ask, opinion, uh, ideas. What do you think, yeah? What is your opinion about the dance? Right? Ah, yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah, 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 ah. yeah, it's okay. That is uh, speaking. <laughs> uh, it, it is a kind of what is it? Mm, can be in the form of monologue, right? Monologue or classically, <laughs> or you ask your students uh, in pairs, for example, in pairs or in groups or uh, uh, individually to give feedback. In the class, I ask them. Uh... In the whole, uh, through the whole class, meaning I ask one student and then the students give me the feedback. So it's like a two-way conversation, but being heard by the whole class. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, speaking right. So, uh, the difference for I think is whenever you uh, ask your students to give the feedback in written way using their own uh, ideas. Okay. Uh, so that should be writing. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, but. By the way, in uh, what is it? In teaching, we have to also give the students uh, what's it? Language focus, right? Language mm -hmm. focus. So, what kinds of linguistic uh, aspects we are teaching to our students? We are developing our students, uh, students to uh, what is it? To acquire in a certain of a day, yeah. Right. So we have to use uh, uh, to give them language focus. So. Uh, if we ask the students to give feedbacks freely, so the language, uh, the language functions will not uh, be effectively or will not be specific. Do you see that? Specific as so, in yes, not 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 specific. Yeah, because uh, we let the students using their own ideas freely. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But if we make use of worksheets, we have to theoretically, right? Theoretically, we have to give the students language focus. Okay. Yeah, language focus. For example. Uh, if we are going to what is it to highlight, for example, expressing of like dislike, do you like the dance? Okay, do you dislike the dance? Yeah, why, etc. Yeah, uh, it means that you have certain language focus, right? Language focus. So if you let the students to uh, use their own uh, ideas in giving feedback freely so the language functions will be <laughs> will be not specified um, so you know what I mean probably uh, we're just focusing uh -huh. on describing uh, a fact uh -huh. so that should be factual and it should be in the present tense form yeah yeah uh, uh -huh. except yeah if you uh, what is it you direct you lead the students to uh, what is it to get back in the form of description, yeah, describing uh, something, you describing the dance, yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So if uh, the language function will be uh, describing things, yeah. 
describing event, describing things, describing people, for example. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That is what I mean. So uh, the language focus uh, can be yeah, uh, uh, describing what, yeah. Describing, uh, it depends on you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all, Bu Elisa. Okay, thank you, Pak Daniel. That's uh, okay, great, thank you, Ibu, great yeah. uh, discussion and ideas, right? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you so much, Ibu Maya and also Mr. Daniel. What a hard discussion, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ibu Maya, there is a question here anyway uh, in the chat box, which is addressed to you uh, from Ibu Nur Azura Osman. Dr. Maya, can we ask the students to choose which dance they love and give reasons? Can we consider that as a speaking practice? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you for Dr. What? Nor Azura Osman. On Nor Azura Osman, yeah. Uh, good questions. Yes, of course. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we, we just discussed about that with Pak uh, Daniel, okay? Mm -hmm. So how is the way to make use of the dance yeah, to it's like that yeah what kinds of integrated skills we are developing to our uh, students yeah i think uh, that is the answer yeah mm -hmm. i just mm -hmm. discuss with Daniel. okay yes uh, is it is it what you mean ibu dr Aizura? <laughs> yes you have oh, answered yes, it during right. the you have answered it during the discussion yes okay uh, uh, so uh, uh, yeah Thank you, Ibu Azura, anyway, for your questions. Yes. Um, so, Bapak Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, by having the models from uh, Mr. Daniel and also Ms. Izan, uh, through the use of this LLA in the teaching and learning implementation, I think we can, uh, we can gain a uh, such kind of a lesson learned yeah something that we need to improve something that we need to um to keep it up on that so so finally we really really know what actually clla is in its implementation so yes it goes back to the basic purpose what actually our purpose uh in what is it in introducing the culture to our students, whether we we want to introduce uh, the uh, the local culture to our students in in the purpose that we want to preserve it, or we want to conserve it, or we want to um, introduce other cultures, not only our own local culture but also the others. So it goes back to our purpose again, and also we also need to consider. Um, our students' characteristics in our class. If they are multiculturalism, yeah, we also can introduce the multicultural, um, you know, um, products to our students. So uh, consider your students and also consider your basic purpose in teaching and learning. That's the key to run any of uh, any kind of any kind of approach that we want to use in our teaching and learning. All right, so Baba Ibu, uh, right now we come to the um, uh, yeah, by Zainal, finally you go back here. <laughs> so uh, it's time for Pak Zainal yeah, to give comments. <laughs> Yeah, because Paisana here is very active, uh, actually. So before we close or before we come to the end of the session, is there still anyone would like to share or would like to have ideas related to, uh, to the workshop that we have already conducted in this uh, three series so far? Mm -hmm. Maybe Paisana or Ibu... Nor Azura or whoever. Is there any things? From Upsi, Abu uh, El. From, from Upsi, Doctor. You invite yes. Doctor Nazri probably. Mm -hmm. um, like. Assalamualaikum. Oh, okay, Waalaikumsalam, Bapak Zainal. Assalamualaikum and good morning. Good morning, okay. Bapak. Good morning, salam alaikum salam. Um, sorry because uh, the internet connection. It's not stable. 
<laughs> okay, so um, okay, I just want to share my opinion about teaching uh, cultural heritage uh, mm-hmm. uh, in schools. Okay, just that uh, before we, I think, before we go further into teaching uh, the cultures that is, um, should I say, alien to the student, okay, because uh, some students, they are not familiar with uh, those uh, original or ancient cultures. I think it would be better if we introduce them with the cultures uh, uh, that are close to them. Okay, uh, for example, um, introduce to them the uh, traditional customs uh, so that they will be, at, uh, at least they will have uh, knowledge, okay, uh, about um, traditional customs uh, that is um, one uh, in their country. And um, and then um, so by uh, introducing a cultures that uh, the students are familiar with, then we go further by um, introduce. Uh, for example, okay, uh, for example, in my school, uh, the majority of the students uh, are Malay. So um, as an introduction. Okay, I would introduce some um, Malay cus- uh, custom to them. Mm-hmm. Malay custom. Okay, and then uh, slowly I will take them into, um, I will take them further into cultures or into uh, cultural heritage that maybe I also are uh, not uh, familiar with. Um, how should, how should I say? <laughs> um, yeah, I think we, I, as for myself, I need to do lots of homework. Okay, I have to find a lot of source of heritage to my student. I, as possible, I would be able to clear up doubts that they have regarding the culture. Because if we as teachers ourselves are not so clear about the cultures itself, Okay, about the original or the uh, culture heritage uh, itself. Um, I think the teaching and learning process is uh, successful. I think that's all. Thank you. Yes, uh, Baba Zaina, uh, I do agree with that because before we teach uh, or before we introduce a uh, culture to the assurance we also need to to know it first right at least we really know um, what actually um the local culture that we would like to introduce to them mm-hmm. but uh somehow we, we also see that by having this uh because you just also previously that uh we can come to the uh, uh, to the culture that is close to us, right? That is close to our surrounding first. So we yeah. really, really need to comprehend it first. So uh, the, the the strength point of this LLA is also, it is more contextualized anyway, because uh, the text that we would like to take is close to us as well. So it is not the, uh, you know, the text that is taken from America or uh, maybe UK that maybe we never go there or we never uh we have uh, never experienced yeah. it before but yeah. here uh, we have ex- ever experienced it um uh, maybe like malaysian wedding for example so if we have married uh, we know that oh yeah the process is like this like this so by having it uh we we have ever experienced it anyway then we can tell it to our children so I think it is more contextual than uh, if we take other uh, foreign cultures to be the discourse in our teaching and learning. Yeah, it is okay. I mean, uh, like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, yes, Papa Zaina. Uh, because uh, currently, actually, we are using the books that are imported from the UK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so most of the cultures there um, are about the foreign cultures. But mm-hmm. I, as you said, uh, we can always adopt and adapt exactly. those culture to the cultures that surrounded us, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. 
exactly adapt well, and adapt right? adopt okay. and adapt yes yeah. that's the point yeah okay uh so ladies and gentlemen uh right now we have reached well uh, i'm sure right now it is 12 something 12 30 in malaysia so uh, i think yeah there is comment from uh, dr azura oh yeah okay uh. there is a comment from Dr. Nur Azura, last week Bapak Harit taught us about Chandel Dawood and I did that. I did a writing practice with my students. Only I asked them to write in a paragraph about Malaysian cuisine. They elaborated based on the pictures they brought earlier. Okay, that's good, Ibu. I don't know whether it is Ibu or Bapak. I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> but uh, it is a good practice anyway. Ibu, okay. Uh, <laughs> that you try, okay? You try to implement this to to your students, especially to reading and writing, yeah? So they watch something or they, they read, um, you know, um, they see the pictures and then they brought it into writing a paragraph about the Malaysian food, okay? That's a good uh, implementation. Thank you, uh, Ibu Azura. You have tried to implement this CLLA into your class. All right, so Baba Ibu, uh, we are so sorry because of the time. We need to end up our last series here. Uh, we are so happy to see you all here and we are also happy to, uh, to hear, to listen to your experiences because some of you also have experienced this CLLA, implemented this CLLA into your teaching and learning. We are glad to hear it and um, we are still welcome anyway. If you um, still try to uh, to catch us, to reach us maybe uh, through Ibu Izan, Miss Izan, because Miss Izan also close to Bumaya. So if you have some queries related to CLLA, you also can contact us. Uh, I also ever share to my email anyway uh, into my presentation. So anytime you would like to share with us, we are very welcome for that. So just feel free to contact us related to this LLA or another discussion that we would like to uh, discuss with us. And uh, later on, if we also would like to learn from you, I do hope that you also <laughs> still welcome to us to learn together. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, I remind you once again that uh, in the end of the session later on, there will be an exit ticket. So please uh, later fill out the exit ticket to get the e-certificate. But beforehand, uh, Yes, yeah, so you can just uh, click on this link, bit.ly uh, slash exit ticket UMBYU PSI workshop series three. Uh -huh. So you can just scan the barcode here to get the e certificate that later on we will send it to you by your email. And uh, last but not least here, we would like also to remind you to uh, to fill in the evaluation form. So uh, in the chat box, it's already dropped there, the link to get the evaluation form link um, to get your views on the workshop you just attended. So please uh, fill in the evaluation form that is already dropped the link into your chat box. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, we would like to thank you once again. And uh, nice to see you all. And we do hope everything is already good, uh, especially for Sekolah Menengah Science Banting there. Uh, you are all now quarantined, but I do hope that you are always safe. Anytime take photo, first. take photo, don't forget. Oh yeah, so yeah. before ending the session. Uh, please come up, all of you. <laughs> yeah, we are yeah, would you please open your camera and we would like to have the last photo session. Okay, well, give your face pose. <laughs> all of you. One, two, three. 
Okay, one more. <laughs> okay. You can give me a free style of your food. <laughs> okay, well, one, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a nice day. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pak Daniel. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, you have great material, right? Doctor, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bapak Nadri from UPSI. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, oh, yeah. Send our regards to your colleagues, Bapak Nadri. Sure, yeah. sure, inshallah. <laughs> Dr. Far, Dr. Dina, and also Dr. Zaida. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yo, yeah, bye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Lulu nge-remove ya? Enggak. Oh, Enggak. mereka hilang sendiri? Uh, ini aku <laughs> lagi screenshot testimoni, Bu. Oh, akhirnya nge-remove-in mereka-mereka yang nggak mau live. <laughs> enggak, enggak. Ini lagi, ini, lagi screenshot testimoni. Oh, iya. <laughs> ya, bagus tuh, Bu. Laporan. Ya, 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 bener, bener, bener. <laughs> Sudah selesai, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Tinggal artikel ya, Bu Mai. Oh. Ya. <laughs> Tinggal artikel. artikel kita target apa? saja. Kita kan kemarin itu, Bu, masing-masing dari kita. Oh, iya, 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 iya. Ya, ya. Tak kira artikel publikasi. Kan, nggak oh. itu, nggak buku. Iya, iya, iya. Berapa lembar, Bu Mai? 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. Enggak, itu kan kalau bikin buku ada batasannya. Minimal berapa gitu supaya. Ya. Nah, kan kalau misalnya sebetulnya sih kalau dikti 200 ya. 200 halaman. Teler. Nah, kalau cuman mau untuk di ini sendiri dikasihkan di Shopee, <laughs> ditaruh di Shopee ya satu enggak apa, -apa. kalau satu dibagi empat kan ringan 25 halaman, nanti chapter satu dua tiga empat lima itu ya bu, ya kayaknya sih udah nancep ya bu ya tadi konsernya si LLE, cuman mungkin hmm. mereka mungkin kedistract dengan Multicultural itu loh, jadi dia ya kan <laughs> mereka mungkin nggak begitu memiliki identitas kayak Indonesia ya, jadinya mereka.